Hello, this is Brian Gordon. I'm here with Steve Ward from Water Innovations. Thank you for being here with us sure. today. My pleasure. Uh, Steve is owner of a company that uh, manufactures water systems. And I'll tell you what, why don't you tell us a little bit about what your company does and what makes your products unique and a little bit about your uh, background in the industry. Okay, well, we're uh, Water Innovations is about 13 years old. I founded it um, primarily to build water recycling systems, which is kind of our niche. We focus on the aerospace anodizing, the general metal finishing, printed circuit boards. That's kind of our, our core markets. Not a lot of people out there that do what we do. We typically use ion exchange to closed loop recycle process rinse waters that have moderate dissolved solids and moderate pHs that make them a good candidate to purify themselves instead of buying water, using it once, waste treating it and putting it down the drain. So rather than just treating it and dumping it down the drain, you're cleaning it up and reusing it. Correct, we will, as an alternative to a, let's say a metal finisher or a plater who will buy the water, they'll clean it up because it needs to meet their certain specifications. They use it in their process to rinse whatever their part is, whether it's a wheel or landing gear or circuit board or whatever it is. They will then have some dissolved solids in the water that we will uh, remove by ion exchange to produce deionized water. So that will go back in a closed loop with about 5% loss, typically. Um, then they just keep running that through till the resin gets exhausted. Then they have to clean it with chemicals, which produce a waste product, which we also build wastewater treatment systems that will manage that hazardous waste to remove regulated metals by chemical precipitation to meet discharge limits. Mm. But our, our core really is the water recycling. And of course we use GF signets, conductivity meters and flow meters and pH meters, level sensors, and we use exclusively George Fisher valves. Well, yeah, so speaking of that, you know, we were on site uh, earlier today, and, uh, but I noticed uh, there's a couple products that caught my attention. And one is, it seems like you've got a unique application for actuated three-way valves. Yeah, we use um, our larger water recycling system that comes in sizes anywhere, anywhere between a 35 gallon a minute and 150 gallon a minute flow. Then we have used the GF three-way actuated valves as a very simple way to control the operations of our systems. Uh, they are fail-safe closed valves. So very simple design allows us with those four valves to control an alternating service cycle. And then once you come out of service, you will be regenerated or cleaned with the chemicals that we also use some George Fisher actuated valves. So we'll use a valve to actuate and allow deionized water to come in, which simultaneously we open another valve to feed regeneration chemistry for a certain amount of time to draw a certain amount of chemistry to um, clean all the contaminants off the resin and put it back in its original state where it's ready to remove contaminants again. And um, yeah, our, our entire skid really is George Fisher and Signet products. It sounds like that, uh, that three-way valve serves a pretty important function in the, in the, in the process. It does, it, and it, again, rather than using two two-way valves, then the three-way valve, it really makes it a very simple design, a very robust design. Now another uh, component I saw that was interesting that not everyone uses uh, and that you said was maybe relatively new was our pressure regulating valves. I noticed you had one or two of them, it looks like, on each skid. Well, we have a pressure retaining valve, retaining valve. on the end of our DI circulation loop. Okay. So our system will, the customer rinse waters will come into a feed tank. We pressurize that. We go through some pre-treatment, then we go through the cation, then the anion, then we go into another tank that holds deionized water. Now from that deionized water tank, they send water to process, but using those same pumps, we also use that distribution loop to send deionized water to the regeneration skids, or to send it to the skids for regeneration. 
Now, the reason we started using your pressure regulating valve is because it is a split header, if the customer's process tank lines are using more or less water, that's going to affect the pressure that the ion exchange skid is seeing in the DI water. So the pressure makes a big difference on how the system's functioning. Yes, if the pressure is consistent, then my regeneration is going to be very consistent. I'm going to get the same volume, the same draw, because we use a eductor with the pressurized feed of DI water to draw our chemistry in. So different from our competitors that may use pumps or may have a day tank that's made up with a known concentration, we use one of your 523 metering valves to precisely control the dose of the chemistry, but if the pressure of the DI water uh, driving that mixture in the eductor changes, it's going to change the amount of chemistry drawn, so my regeneration cycle would vary from cycle to cycle, and we avoid that variance by always sending it a consistent pressurized DI water. Now, have you tried any of the other uh, available ones out there? And is ours? I'm guessing ours is performing well. If you're still using it, because I've, I've, I've heard uh, issues with hysteresis and fluctuations of downstream pressure. How, how's ours been working out for you? You know, it, it's worked well. We've had a consistency of our regeneration process. Mm -hmm. um, I've never used anybody else's valves. I mean, okay. as you know, we're we're pretty loyal to George Fisher. Um, but yeah, it's been. We probably used it on our last four or five s systems. Mm -hmm. We're constantly trying to make our system a little better, a little smarter, a little more efficient, and that's just the latest in that optimization. Now, the the other, uh, the last component I saw that I thought was interesting, and, and it's it's a newer product for George Fisher, was the ultrasonic level. Yeah, we're, we've just begun to, to use that. I um, <clears throat> I had used years ago a competitor's product, uh -huh. and I, I had a horrible experience with it, okay. and I had sworn off ultrasonics, uh -huh. um, having used them for uh, many years. In fact, it, in all honesty, some of my guys are still a little dubious of me deciding to use ultrasonics again, uh -huh. because they had similar experience with a competitive product. So we don't have a lot of runtime under our belt on the product, uh, but have faith in George Fisher's and Signet's um, engineering and its products so we're hopeful because that fits a real need for us because we often use cone bottom tanks yeah and the alternative I, I use a submersible pressure transducer which is what we will use in a lot of cases so example if it's deionized water I'll still use a stainless steel pressure transducer because it can just sit in the bottom of the tank but if it's a cone bottom tank or if it's a uh, concentrated waste where I need a non-contact sensor, then the ultrasonic is, is a good economical option. Great. Well, uh, anything else interesting or unique you want to tell us about your systems or, or the direction we're going or? Yeah, we're actually um, kind of a new trend that we're working on that um, we're jumping on the bandwagon with a lot of people looking at artificial intelligence and looking at um, analytics and we're working and looking to work with George Fisher to create a smarter machine. Uh, we're looking to have our system controller be able to learn how to fix itself. Yeah. So since, for example, chemical draw is so critical on our system, we're gonna measure the chemical draw and waste volume. We're gonna measure the waste volume. Since those are all determined by the pressure going through the system, we're going to add variable frequency drives to control our pumps. So if my flow is off or my volume is off, I can utilize an actuated 523 valve to correct itself. Um, so I think it's really going to set us apart in the industry. I, I'm not aware of any, anybody that's building systems similar to what we are that's actively moving down that path of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Yeah. So that's something that, that we're really looking forward for George Fisher to support us and to help us develop that technology. Well, that's the direction we're moving at with our uh, uh, GF uh, Signet instrumentation. So hopefully uh, we continue to be partners in this moving forward. And, uh, and I agree, I think that's, that's a good direction to go. And uh, 
less time, less less money, and uh, and and it sounds like that'll probably save energy as well. Well, it's it's an it's a source of ongoing revenue for us. So if I can sell a system and I can have a technician that sits in his office and occasionally peeks in and monitors and optimizes the system instead of my customer needing to pay an operator to run that system, it brings the customer value. Um, it makes my system really unparalleled in, yeah. in the market. And it's a source of uh, ongoing relationship and revenue for us in dealing with our customer. Sounds like a win-win. It is, it is. Well, Steve, I appreciate you taking the time to be here again with us today, and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks, Brian.